Hello and welcome to Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. My name is Mikhail Tinubu. Welcome to today's show, Wednesday's show, to bring you all the latest sports news from around the world. Let's begin. Child trafficking situation that happened to Mo Farah as a young child. Um, he's gonna, there's an interview we want to show you and I think it will give you more clarity on context about what he felt in those moments. First of all though, we'll go to former Manchester United forward Wayne Rooney, who was unveiled as the new head coach of Major League Soccer side DC United on Tuesday, July 12th. The 36-year-old who played for DC United between 2018 and 2019 stepped down as manager of Derby County last month after a turbulent 17-month spell during which the English club were marred by financial trouble and relegated to the third tier. At a news conference, Rooney said he hoped he can instill a hard-working mentality in the team and said the players will need to step up their game while the front office looks at bringing in new faces to bolster the side. Rooney said the team, currently placed off bottom in the Eastern Conference, was underachieving. Rooney said he wanted to make the team horrible to play against. The new coach didn't shy away from his long-term ambitions, admitting he eventually wants to see himself manage at some of the world's biggest clubs, hoping that his spell at DC United would elevate both the team and his managerial reputation. Um, I've seen a few... I, in my opinion, Rooney is absolutely right, saying that uh, the MLS is a step backwards from his days at Derby County it is a complete disrespect to the league. The fact is the league has come leaps and bounds, and it has been through the uh, contributions of Premier League and European legends such as Rooney, such as Ibrahimovic, um, players who have gone on to the, to the league to impart their wisdom, their experience, and leave an imprint of just how high the standards in the Premier League and the rest of Europe is. To, to be honest, this might be better for Rooney, an environment where the football is, there's less of a pressure on him to deliver, given that at least DC United are not facing any financial uh, woes that uh, Derby County suffered under his, uh, under his watch, which wasn't his fault, by the way. But at the end of the day, your name gets attached to something that failed in the minds of many. You must have been responsible. Now, French midfielder Paul Pogba on Tuesday, July 12th, considered the volume of different coaches he played under at Manchester United hindered his chances of success in England, while he also insisted he is pleased to be home at Juventus. Pogba left Juventus to rejoin United, who he played for as a youngster for a world record fee in 2016. But after six years where he flattered to deceive in England, the 29-year-old is back in Turin, following his departure from United at the end of last season. Speaking at a news conference on Tuesday, July 12th, he outlined the reasons why, after leaving Italy, having won four Serie A titles with Juventus, he is back with only two further trophies to his name from his time at United, where he played under three coaches, including interims. Pogba has signed a four-year contract at Juventus, where he hopes to steer the underperforming Serie A giants to their first Scudetto in three seasons. Pogba, in my opinion, did not give 100% of his uh, ability of his efforts at United. We saw what Pogba was capable of doing on days that Pogba wanted to play good football. But on too many occasions, Pogba gave up uh, during matches, uh, requiring others to carry burdens for him in midfield that ultimately should have fallen to him as one of the highest paid players in the squad and supposedly one of the leaders in the dressing room. Paul Pogba may be better off in the Serie A, where he has plenty of uh, experience, where he played under um, 
with a lot of quality players, but at a slower pace than the Premier League. That might just suit s some players uh, than others. A lot of uh, my hope for Kwakba is that he can rekindle some of his club-level performances that we saw from him during his time at Juventus the first time around. Now, reigning European champions, Netherlands, prepare to face Portugal on Wednesday, July 12th, without their star striker, Vivian Midema. The 25-year-old is isolating with COVID symptoms. Midema has scored 94 goals in 112 games for her country. Coach Mark Parsons admitted her absence was a big blow for the team, but vowed to move forward. Parsons said his team will be looking to unbalance their opponent and said even without Medema, they still have the caliber of players who can create plenty of chances and those who convert chances to goals. Group C saw all four of its teams draw their first game with Portugal and Switzerland, leading the group by virtue of goals scored following their 2-2 draw. The Netherlands draw, uh, drew 1-1 with Sweden in their opener. Five o'clock, we got the news. Meanwhile, Portugal coach Fernando Neto said he trusts his team to play their own possession-based game as they prepare to face the current European champions, the Netherlands, on Wednesday. In their second match of Euro 2022, uh, Group C saw all four of its teams draw their first game with Portugal. And Switzerland, as we said before, leads the group by virtue of goals scored following their 2-2 draw. The Netherlands, uh, who drew 1-1 uh, with uh, Sweden in their opener, uh, with the Dutch, uh, will be playing without their star striker, Vivian Midema. Uh, who is isolated after testing positive for COVID-19. Now, these are two highly technical play, uh, teams and will set up to control possession from the start. It should prove um, the ultimate, ultimate uh, display of technical football from two strong women's sides that are capable of piercing most defences. Um, one drawback from most... Uh, possession hungry teams is the defensive side of their game but if both sides are throwing caution to the wind and are going just absolute uh, top gun to control possession it might uh, just deliver the best football for the neutral that's one match I think we should all tune into Multiple Olympic and world champion Mo Farah was brought to Britain from Djibouti at the age of nine and was forced to do housework and childcare in exchange for food, he told the BBC. The 39-year-old Briton, who was born in Somalia, added his name had been changed to Mohammed Farah from Hussein Abdi Kahin in the fake travel documents used to fly him to Britain by a woman he had never met before. Once he arrived in the UK, however, the woman took him to a home in Onslow, West London, and tore apart a paper with the contact details of his relatives. Her family did not allow him to go to school until the age of 12. His physical education teacher, Alan Watkinson, contacted social services and helped him find a foster family in the Somali community after Farah told him what he was going through. Farah's mother, Aisha, told the BBC she had been helpless for 10 years, more than 10 years, until she spoke to her son on the phone for the first time in a long time. Farah said in May his elite track career could be over after, the finished, uh, after he finished runner-up in the London 10,000 meter race and ruled out taking part in this month's world championships. Farah, who completed the 5,000 and 10,000 meters doubles at the 2012 and 2016 uh, Olympics, will, however, run a marathon for the first time since 2019 when he takes part at the London Marathon in October. Truly some heartbreaking things to hear there. From the age of nine, for a child to go through such uh, psychological um, oppression, 
a change of his own identity, uh, to be apart from his own family, to be separated and declared an other in a home that he had to work from the age of nine to maintain the cleanliness, the, the, the health of other people's children. At nine, no child should have to carry that, especially when they're separated from people who love them. Um, I do wonder, like Mo Farah said, or as Abdul said, what the other Mohammed Farah must be doing these days. We know Somalia has gone through a lot of issues and civil wars in its history. Whether he's alive or not, we don't know that for, yet, for now. But I hope Mohammed Farah's case brings awareness to the kinds of issues that as sports, as athletes, we tend to not associate with them. We tend to see them separate. Mohammed Farah already went through a lot of separation when he was a child, hopefully. He doesn't have to go through any more of such anguish. Now, former world number three Dominic Thiem won his first match in 14 months with victory at the Bastad Open on Tuesday, July 12th, as the Australian looks to re resurrect his career following a wrist injury that prevented him from defending his US Open title last year. Thiem had not won a match since a second round victory in Rome in May last year and was sidelined for nine months after injuring his wrist in Mallorca falling to 30, uh, 339 in the world rankings. The 28-year-old, who had also entered second-tier challenger tournaments in a bid to regain his form, snapped a 10-match losing streak on the tour when he beat Finland's Emil Rusuvori 3-6, 6-1, 7-6-5 at the clay court event in Bastad. Thiem will next play Spanish fourth seed Roberto Bastita um, Agut, who received a bye into the second round. Also into the second round are Alejandro Davidovich Fokina. The Spaniard beat Portugal's Jao Sosa, 6-4, 6-2, and Mark Andrea Usler of Switzerland, who ran out a 6-3, 6-4 winner over seventh seed Holger Rune of Denmark, eighth seed Sebastian Baez of um, Argentina is also safely through after beating Italy's Fabinho Fognini 6-3, 6-4. My name is Mikhail Tinubu. As always, I thank you for joining us on Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Mm -hmm.